Welcome back. Central to this peace deal, as we've been saying, is the involvement of the international community, in particular the United Nations. The problem is the UN's previous involvement in Somalia, which has been, at best, patchy. It started in 1993, replacing a, a year-old US-led mission called Operation Restore Hope. But neither the US nor the UN could do that. By 1995, the UN was forced to withdraw troops after sustaining heavy casualties in the escalating violence. For the next 10 years, there was a hiatus in the UN's participation in Somalia. It wasn't until 2005, when the exiled Somali government returned from Kenya, that the UN started to get involved again. First in 2006, the Security Council voted to create a regional force to support the government. And in 2007, it agreed to extend the African Union's peacekeeping mission. But with the rejection of this latest U.S.-brokered ceasefire, serious questions have now been raised about just how effective the U.N. can really be in such a divided country. Joining us again, our guests in Nairobi, Mohammed Ali Noor, in London, Mohammed Gur, and on the line from Asmara in Eritrea, Zachariah Mohammed Hajj Abdi. Gentlemen, thanks for staying with us. I'm going to go back to uh, London, speak to Mohammed Gur there. We've been outlining there the UN's role here and you already made the point about whether this 120 days is really a, a realistic um, time frame. I've also read comments of yours which said you've been saddened by the lack of response from the international community in the past. What makes you think they're going to react any differently now after 17 years of, of chaos in the country? Well, if, if you remember back in, in January um, 2007, when uh, after the Ethiopian forces, you know, um, we, uh, entered Somalia, there was a, uh, the, the African Union passed a resolution which was sending, uh, uh, with the UN, sending 8,000 uh, strong troops to Somalia to replace the Ethiopians. It never happened. So now the fear is there. Um, if, the, as, as I said, uh, the international community spearheaded by the United States and the EU, do not act quickly to, and show with good faith that they mean what they said and they are behind this, then we will, we will have problems because people will not believe it. The Somali people have a lot of distrust for the United Nations, as you have said. Uh, so many times that Somalis sign agreements, but so many times after the agreement is the United Nations abandons and the international community abandoned the Somali people and left them to their demise. Okay, so, so let's, is put this again let's put that then another, to Muhammad Ali Noor. again the same thing? Let's put that to Muhammad Ali Noor, the Somali ambassador uh, to Kenya who's in Nairobi for us. You've heard a lot of, I guess I've used this word before, accusations already about what the Somali government is going to do, what the UN is going to do. Tell me about your confidence that this will work. This 120 day period is very, very tight. I think I'm very optimistic uh, that it will happen. And also, I think there's a point worth it to make that uh, the Turban troops actually were uh, invited by the TFG government uh, in Somalia. And the agreement was that they will go back as soon as African peacekeeping forces will come, which never happened. Um, uh, we have uh, Uganda and Burundi uh, forces, and we are appreciative. But we believe that the Turban troops will go back as soon as the UN peacekeeping forces come. The other point I want to make is that uh, we have to respect the Somali people uh, who are suffering. And we cannot, every time when we sign an agreement, saying that uh, there's this group, this group, this group now, the uh, ARS, ARS group, or who are in Djibouti, who are in Djibouti, who was led by the chairman, uh, Sheikh Sharif Ahmed, was there. And now it's not, I don't think that it's uh, good that I'm hearing from Zakaria say that uh, 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 they don't agree with him when he signed a peace agreement. Um, the other point that I want to make also is that Somalia is tired of uh, instability. Somalia wants peace. We want to bring humanitarian aid to the people. The government is very committed. Uh, that shows uh, that the uh, president went to Djibouti. The prime minister was there at the signing ceremony. We had a big delegation and this, I think, the, uh, the majority of the people agree with it, and I'm very, very optimistic that it will succeed. And are you sure also and optimistic that the interim government will survive the Ethiopians leaving? Because there are many who say that it's the Ethiopians who are really propping up the interim government. I think uh, also another point is that the UN Security Council came to Djibouti to show how important Somalia is, to show that they want to 
uh, really support us uh, uh, in uh, bringing the uh, UBS cable forces. And I said uh, the Turban group, uh, the Turban troops, wanted to go back yesterday, but the TFG doesn't want to have a vacuum left in Somalia. That's why we were asking. Uh, that's why our president went to New York and ask uh, the UN Security Council to have a uh, UN peacekeeping force to Somalia as soon as possible so that the Serbian forces can go back to the country. Okay, let's go back to Zakaria Mohamed Hajabdu, who's on the line for us uh, from Eritrea. Obviously, your main concern, as you've highlighted earlier, is the presence of Ethiopia uh, in the country. Let's look ahead. Let's say that something does happen here. Let's say that the UN forces do get in and that the Ethiopian forces leave. Will you be willing to cooperate and work with the UN peacekeepers there or will you still be uh, if I could use this word hostile towards them because they are as you might say occupying the country let me first assert I don't see any hope and, and, and there's no wagon to board on as my friend uh, Gura sees the, 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 uh, you have said rightly there is a historical document there is a documentation of the, of the, of the UN failures in Somalia. I think this is yet another conspiracy. UN was part of the occupation. You know, w when the Ethiopian troops invaded Somalia in 2006, uh, 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 the, the United Nations have, have, up to now, they haven't said anything. The atrocities that the Ethiopian forces, the Ethiopian occupation forces have committed, the UN have, 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 uh, haven't said anything, while the international organizations like Amnesty International and, and Human Rights Watch have documented numerous uh, human rights abuse, numerous genocide and war crimes have been committed, even at the, at the, at the level of the European, European Parliament. Now, I mean, UN cannot turn overnight into an angel uh, and, and save the Somali people from the atrocities and the occupation of the Ethiopians. In another uh, uh, assertion is that there is no so-called transitional federal government. The moment that the Ethiopian troops have entered into Somalia, and they have surrendered the sovereignty and the independence of the Somali people in the hands of the enemy, the, 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 the TFG is over. Therefore, what we are talking here, there is no Somali, Somali conflict now in Somalia. This is a diversion, and actually, from the United States, the reality, the diversion from the reality, from the part of the United Nations. If they were genuine, uh, genuine uh, reconciliation, they should talk about the occupation and the pull out of the Ethiopian occupation from the soil of Somalia. OK, it then, we are going to have to leave it there. I'm sorry to interrupt you, sir, but we have run out of time. Zakaria Mohamed Hajabdi on the line from Eritrea. Also, Mohamed Ali Nur in Nairobi and Mohamed Gur in London. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. And thank you, our viewer, for joining us on this edition of Inside Story. Goodbye for now.